one thing that I often hear about with Nyx is the concept of flakes. And... <laughs> I don't fully understand what a flake is and what the value of... Just... What, just we'll go from that. Like, what what are flakes and why why do they exist and why would you use them? <laughs> For anyone just listening, just, like, shaking his head. Flakes are... They're problematic because they are not a single feature. Right. <laughs> Ideally, historically, and I think everyone in the ecosystem, or most in the ecosystem, would agree that um, releasing this feature set with under under one name called Flakes was not the brightest idea. Mm -hmm. I think, in hindsight, it had been more useful to cut this down and multiple different features, and then and then release them. Uh, incrementally right so that's why i can tell you what is the feature set that is in flakes mm -hmm. one of it is that by default the evaluation of the nix language is pure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which uh, one of the implications of that is Otherwise, by default, we're not using flakes. The evaluation is, even though the idea of Nix is to to have pure evaluation, I don't know why historically evaluation is not pure. What it means, for example, is that in impure, you can read environment variables mm -hmm. in the Nix language, which means the evaluation depends on something other than the Nix code. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's impure, because some one time you can set this environment variable uh, and you get one result. Mm -hmm. And then I send it to my buddy and they run it and they get a different result. Right. Theoretically, how many times this actually happens? I don't know, but it's clearly a better idea to have pure evaluation. And in Flakes, evaluation is, is pure by default. Mm -hmm. Another feature of Flakes is that um, there is Flake inputs mm -hmm. and outputs. Mm -hmm. It's part of a of a schema. It's a it's actually a partially defined schema. The the part of it that is strict is that there are inputs and outputs, and there's a lock file. Mm -hmm that locks those uh, inputs. So I can define, may I, may I show? I think it's best yeah. to show. I, I am using flakes pretty much all the time. Did I share? There you go. <clears throat> when using flakes, there must be a flake.nix mm -hmm. file. And here is the flake.nix file of my same repository we're having the configurations. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have a little bit of config here. You must have some, you probably have some inputs because otherwise it's not very useful. And for example, if I search around, there should be a, let's find it this way, mm, here. But Nix packages, it's the most significant input here. Mm -hmm. You can see it's URL is defined as uh, Nix packages, which is actually equivalent to GitHub. Colon Nix OS slash Nix packages. Right. And then this is a branch. Uh, if you remember the, the graph, this is the most uh, uh, recent uh, branch of Nix packages that is cached. Mm -hmm. It has public cache. If you use Nix, if you use uh, master, this, then you would probably have to build many when you when you do an XOS rebuild you probably end up locally compiling mm -hmm. frequently mm -hmm. things whatever the linux kernel uh, anything uh, that has been updated on on master 
mm -hmm. since it uh, reached uh, Linux packages and stable. Mm -hmm. So typically, a desktop, a like PC desktop user would want to use Nix packages and stable. Mm -hmm. So these are inputs, and I have lots of them. Uh, Nix on Droid is a fun little thing. Uh, Nix index database has to do with that coma program we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, here's home manager, which is the part that lets us uh, manage user home directories. So users have they can have their own programs and their own configuration files mm -hmm. uh, managed but as I, well, not only the operating system. I think we should touch on like why. Before and here's Flake. the flick. But, but, but before Flakes was even a thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you'd you'd import Nix packages in another way. Maybe you can demo it later. Yes. There's an import command. It doesn't yes. matter. Mm -hmm. You can show but, it. The original problem was, and you might have your code, and you'll import Nix packages at a particular version, and you want to depend on another piece of software outside of Nix packages. Mm -hmm. They might also, like everything needs Nix packages. So they probably also import Nix packages. So now I want to build my piece of software. I've imported Nix packages. They imported Nix packages. Maybe I have a third piece of software. Oh my God, they, they imported Nix packages. I have three Nix packages. Mm -hmm. right <laughs> Nothing's actually wrong with that. Right. The, everything would work, but it's very, very large. Right. It's one problem. So... I think he, he hit the nail on the head. It's like a bunch of features. But one of them, when it starts to get to the schema, was the capability to also say, I'm going to have one Nix packages. And when I start to import other things, I want you guys to use this one Nix package. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's good and bad. Like a lot of people tend to do that because <clears throat> we value more sometimes space. Mm -hmm. I just want a nice one graph, but you're, you know, the, the, the trade-off here is you're changing what someone said they've tested it against. There's this software author and they said, I've only tested it against Nix, Nix packages 23 to 11. And I'm saying, nah, use 24.05. These are right. release versions, mm -hmm. you know, and consolidate them all to this one. Flakes makes that very easy. You could do this. The, the thing with flakes is you could do everything without flakes. That's what like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just use flakes now also because I was the like longest holdout. Um, it just makes a lot of these things easier to do, you know, but um, I think that was one of the big ones. So this whole schema and stuff, but I just wanted to, to me, that was like one of the big ones. Mm -hmm. That was like why I think the impurity was also another really good one you, men you mentioned. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, even in before flakes and without flakes, there's still there are ways to pin dependencies like Nix packages or whatever else uh, other um, other repositories I'm bringing into my evaluation. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there are ways to to not use flakes, and that's fine. Um, this. Flakes provides a certain built-in mechanism for uh, pinning uh, dependencies, and we 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 saw that for a moment in uh, the the lock file. There, it's automatically generated, and it will pin the dependencies to Git revisions, and it can be bumped. Mm -hmm. and that's what I do occasionally. I, in order to um, bump, would you like to see a demonstration of um, what it looks like to bump my uh, uh, yeah, sure. bumping NixOS configuration? Bump to see whether there are updates. Sure, let's do that. Okay. Apparently, I need to click more than once here in order to share the screen. Okay. Okay. So I'll go to. Infra repo. I'll cancel this. I'll restore to undo the change that I made. What I need to do is Nix fake update. This will bump all the all the inputs. Mm -hmm. 
But the most significant one is Nix packages. That's where most of my software comes from. Mm -hmm. And here it is downloading, it just finished. And here it is unpacking and copying it to the store. And I get a report of a uh, NUR. This is like AUR. This is mm -hmm. NUR, Nix user. Right, right. A repo this home manager, Nix packages, and Nix Vim, what I use to configure my Neo Vim with. The inputs have been updated, but I didn't use, I didn't rebuild anything yet. Right. What I'm going to do is I do Nix, like check, let's make it verbose. And this will check all of the checks. It will build all of the checks that I have in this repository, which include two desktops and a laptop and uh, format the code formatting, the code style in this repository. Mm -hmm. And some other less significant things. I find <clears throat> the the biggest. We've been so focused on NixOS, and I think that's been great. Mm -hmm. To me, the, Flakes and NixOS is a a bit more of a non-starter. Like just use Flakes. Sure. But for another big avenue, people get into Nix is for project development. Mm -hmm. and that's a whole nother. Also, podcasts you can like <laughs> write a file and and do all the Nix stuff, but for a repo mm -hmm. only. And that had, I think, where you, I I think at least my own personal history with Flakes, why I was very slow to come around, was the project way to do it was much easier before. Mm -hmm. Like Flakes has a lot more ceremony, and. You used to be able to just write something called like a shell, a shell.nix file. Mm. It was way simpler. You just, it looked more like a file. You just threw the packages you wanted and called it a day mm. instead of like all this input and lock files. And, and so, and, you know, it didn't seem like you got much more out of it. XOS, just everything just tends to, when you start up a new OS, you're probably starting from Flake. So it's like, uh, that's why I think less of an issue. Right. I think people are making it now more of an issue than it is. I mean, they've published stats at all the Knicks cons. It's like mostly because more of the users have started off now. Like the community is just growing insane, like exponentially. They're, they only know flakes from the get go. Right. So it's, it's user base like is very huge. So it's almost comical that it's still such a intention. It's just for like old farts. Like me that like had our old way of doing it and we were like, it was fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know, even me, I'm like, oh, it's whatever, I, you know. Personally, being someone from like outside of this space, I'm not even aware of this like, the, the fact that there is issues regarding whether you use flakes or you don't use flakes. Like the only time I ever, I, like I, I hear about the concept of a flake, but I, I, I never hear about any of the, um, any of that additional stuff that goes along with it. I think that's that's why people who are getting interested in it do ask about it, because they hear about people arguing about it, but they don't really know, like, especially if they're seeing a new system where flakes are there from the start, they don't really see why this is a point of discussion to begin with. So they're kind of interested in, in, in why this is happening. Oh, and, I mean, you have to enable it. Too. I think that like, they're like, this is my default. That, I think that's probably it too. It's like, mm -hmm. it's the default for us all. And it's still experimental or whatever is the right. label. And you have to like explicitly enable the feature set. So, <laughs> and that's this, that's, that's probably the real kerfuffle. Mm -hmm. 